Okay, guys, so uh, now we'll get into some lung segment auscultation. So uh, I like starting off with this uh, kind of classic photo here of an old timey, uh, probably 17th century, 18th century uh, physician uh, listening to the lung segments of this patient here with a really old, old, old fashioned stethoscope. Just be thankful for the ones that we have now, right? So uh, the first component of lung segment auscultation is our, uh, our breath sounds, right? So breath sounds um, involve having the patient take deep breaths while we're auscultating, right? So um, you need to listen through a full, at least one complete respiratory cycle. So for, from an inspiration to expiration, um, and you always compare side to side, comparing for any differences in the sounds. Um, you know, breath sounds in the same area of the lung should sound the same on left to right. So if I'm listening to the, you know, the right anterior apical segment, it should sound the same as it does on the left anterior ap apical segments, right? And going side to side allows us to make those comparisons of what's normal, what's abnormal. Now, the question is, well, what does a normal lung sound like? So um, it depends on the region we're listening to. So if we're listening over the trachea or over the bronchioles, right, the primary bronchioles, the sounds are going to be a little different than, it, than they are when we're actually listening over a lung segment. So um, the, the general rule of thumb is the further we move away from those upper airways, the, the softer the sound gets, right? And the closer we get to those larger airways, um, the, lar the louder the sound gets, right? So if we're listening right over the trachea, um, the sounds are going to be very loud. But that's normal because we remember our upper airways, our trachea, is a pretty large bore or large caliper, uh, caliper you know, tube, right, compared to our you know, our segments in our lower airways, right? So the sound there is going to be loud, high pitched, and we're actually going to hear a much greater uh, portion of the expiratory sound, typically over our trachea, right? So that's a normal sound. So here's an example of what that sounds like. And um, for those, uh, we've got a, you know, a, a, these available to you guys um, uh, through the website, um, as well as for my students um, on Blackboard. So, so we'll play these here, though. So that's a bronchial or tracheal sound. So that's what you what you should hear normally, right, over the trachea, right? It's going to be this louder, a little bit higher pitched sound, a little bit more tubular, and again, you might appreciate the um, the expiratory sound a little bit even more than the inspiratory sounds. Now, bronchovesicular sounds we hear more over the manubrium um, or the upper interscapular region, and that that makes sense because like that's kind of if you remember your anatomy. That's kind of where the upper, you know, the bronchioles are are, um, are located. So we have this kind of moderate, medium pitch sound over there. And again, because we're not exactly on the lung segments yet, we're still kind of in the primary bronchii. So that sound is going to be moderate in sound, medium pitch, and you might have a little bit of rustling there. Um, so over those regions, um, you're going to hear a one-to-one -one ratio. You'll hear inspiration and expiration kind of appreciated uh, similarly. So I'll play these now. Now, you, what you might appreciate when playing this is actually you hear um, the heart beating. And that makes sense because when we're hearing these normally over those regions, that's kind of where the heart auscultation locations are for you know, valve sounds, so it wouldn't be too unexpected, right, to hear that, right? You're going to, you're going to, you know, play, if you place your scope, you know, over the peristomal borders, you're going to hear the heart, right? So that's not too abnormal. Um, vesicular sounds, and this is the sound that we should be hearing when a patient is breathing through their mouth um, and when we're auscultating over the peripheral lung fields, right? Like that's what we should be hearing over those um, segments, right? It's going to be a softer, lower pitch, kind of a gentle rustling sound. Um, and you might not hear the expiratory phase. So we say we hear inspiration a little bit more than we do expiration. So they have more of a two to one ratio between ins uh, inspiration to expiration. And again, this is what you would hear normally over the lung, uh, lung segments. So I'll play, I'll play this for you guys. Inspiration, you don't really hear much expiration. Right? 
vesicles. So that's, those are vesicular sounds, and that's what you should hear normally over the, the peripheral lung segments. So again, it's just a graph you know, showing you where we should be hearing these sounds. Normally, vesicular sounds, again, you hear, should be hearing them in most of the lung segments. Your bronchovesicular sounds, again, over your primary bronchii, your large bronchii, and obviously bronchial or tracheal sounds, you'll hear over the trachea. Now, this is a map here uh, showing all those normal lung segment locations. Again, um, you know, review the videos for that. It's probably best to, to, to remind you, but um, you know, a quick and easy way to find all your segments is remember your surface anatomy, right? So if you remember where the angle of Louis is kind of located, right? If we just go slightly um, to the right of that, right? We're gonna, in, in our intercostal spaces, we'll be in our anterior upper lobe, right? It's kind of where they fall between, you know, ribs, you know, intercostal spaces uh, uh, one through three. All right. Our anterior apical, our apical segments, right? If we you know, draw a plane basically above the, the clavicle and listen to that little pocket there, you know, we'll hear them there. For the middle lobe and lingula, remember we said we kind of listen to those generally in the same area. Find your xiphoid process and just come, you know, a little bit more to the in, the mid clavicular line and auscultate over that intercostal space, uh, the fifth intercostal space, kind of the nipple line. And then the anterior basal, come over to the you know a little bit to the mid clavicular line and just come slightly down or make a slight diagonal, right? So if you find those landmarks, and again, the videos are probably better to demonstrate these, um, it makes finding these segments on the, on the, on the rib cage a little bit easier. Posterior side gets a little bit more complicated, um, but again, same thing if you remember our surface anatomy. So if we start at the third rib, which we remember for most people is that the spine of the scapula, right? And if we come just slightly lateral to that, Again, we want to be away from the, you know, the paraspinal boards. We want a little bit more into the, into the lung segments because if we're super close, we'll be listing right over the, 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 the bronchioles, actually. So we come a little bit more lateral. Um, to do this, we want to make sure that we have the patient move their uh, sternum away so we can, you know, listen over the intercostal space. And I want to, I want to stress that, that you're not listening over the ribs, right? Because if you listen over the ribs, we won't be transmitting sound effectively. You won't hear anything. So it's got to be over an intercostal space. You're not going to project sound effectively. You won't hear anything, right? So uh, the posterior, um, the posterior segments of the uh, upper lobe, um, we're going to hear again. You know, third intercostal space, or if you find the third, um, um, the third thoracic segment, come slightly la uh, lateral to that. Um, if we remember um, our for our uh, superior, the lower lobe, posterior superior, remember that the, the inferior angle of the scapula is roughly the seventh uh, spinous process of the thoracic spine. Um, and remember that the, this segment falls between three and seven. If we you know, find a location that is you know, between spine and scapula, the inferior border, paras, you know, paraspinally in that region, that's gonna be our superior of the low of the posterior superior of the lower lobe anything below that right if we come from the seventh that again that inferior spine of the scapula and down seventh to tenth ribs and intercostal spaces that's going to be our posterior basal segments so if you use your scapula as your landmarks um really easy our apical segments are just above the spine of the scapula so again use your surface anatomy helps make things a little bit easier then your lateral basal will be in the same plane basically as your posterior basal, and you're just coming um, a little bit more laterally into the midclavicular, uh, uh, lateral from the midclavicular line into the inter, in, into the mid axillary line. So again, it's probably better to, to view the videos; uh, those are on the YouTube channel um, as well as um, you know, your students have them available to you. So uh, that is normal breath sounds in uh, in, uh, in a nutshell.